Assalamu alaikum, ahlan wa sahlan bikum min Kuwait. Yes, we are in Kuwait. It is like paradise over here. I'm so excited to share with you guys this vlog because one of the most common questions I got asked before coming to the Kuwait from the United States or even from the locals living here and working here is why are you going to Kuwait? To be honest, this is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to. I'm here at the beach. I'm staying in Salmiya. I'm in Marina Beach right here and we've got the skyline which you can kind of see in the distance. We're about 10 kilometers south of Kuwait City. So you can see the big skyscrapers kind of in the distance behind me. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys not only the taste, the sounds, the smells, what the culture is like, but I'll share a few reasons why I am here in Kuwait. It is actually going to be, in just a couple of days, the national day, so Independence Day here in the country, 59 years of independence. So it's gonna be pretty wild, and I'm pretty excited to be here for that, I will say that this video is not sponsored in any way by the Kuwaiti government. I don't know anyone uh, personally living here. I have no family connections to the area. So this video will be 100% unbiased experience of what it's like to travel to Kuwait. And I'll share some best tips if you're thinking about visiting this beautiful country. Hope you guys enjoy. So when people think Kuwait, they normally think the Middle East, desert, really hot, uh, all sand, nothing else. And there is a lot of sand, but there's also a lot of sand on the beach. We've got palm trees, we've got beautiful blue, and you can see the skyline in the background. So it's pretty unique to have a beach, palm trees, and then just a wall of skyscrapers in the distance, which is really, really cool. It's really beautiful. Uh, in the summer, it is pretty unbearable heat. But in the winter, it's February, uh, it's like 20, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and absolutely perfect weather for walking on the beach and going for a little swim. I will say the water is actually too cold to swim in. I did go in the water and I froze, and it's really cold, pretty chilly at this time of the year. But look at that view. Although the Arabian Gulf is pretty chilly this time of the year, I was able to hang out with the elite swim team, Kuwait. This is the biggest swim team in the country. And at this site visit, I was able to get in some laps, do an interview with the head coach. So if you're interested in learning more about this swim team and others in Kuwait, check out my swim pro. I'll link it in the description of this video. We are in the Grand Avenues Mall. This is the largest mall in the country of Kuwait and it's also the second largest in the Middle East. And you take a look, it's pretty long and pretty big. I think I've entered the fancy section of the mall. We got Louis Vuitton, Prada, a whole bunch of places I've never heard of. But it looks pretty nice. Let's go buy some things. I actually visited five or six different malls while I was in Kuwait between Salmiya and Kuwait City. I visited the Souk Mubarakiye, Marina Mall, Salmiya Mall, Al Salam Mall, Avenues Mall. The Avenues Mall is probably the most spiffy. It is the largest in the country, second largest in the Middle East. I also visited the fishing market, and this is as old school fishing market as you can get. I got to see the auctioning off of different types of fish, and it was a pretty, pretty wild to see all of this fish just laying on the floor. I will say it did smell pretty bad, but I definitely got a feel for what it's like to purchase fish. Getting around Kuwait City and Salmiya is actually pretty easy. There is a bus network, and unlike most of the Kuwaitis who have a car, a lot of the working class actually transport themselves by bus or walking. Not a lot of people are riding bikes, although I did rent a bike from the Marina Beach, and I biked all the way north about 15 kilometers past the Kuwait Towers, and that was pretty sweet. It was a 30 kilometer bike ride beautiful all along the coastline. One of the most continuous uh, bike rides I've actually ever done on the shore. And the Arabian Gulf is absolutely beautiful. Got to see a few boats, few jet skis. For the most part, the pedestrians were pretty minimal, but overall it was an awesome experience to go for such a long bike ride. Outside of taking the bus, I did take the local ride-sharing app, Karim. Karim is just like Uber, it's actually owned by Uber, 0.9 US dollars. And then the currency in Kuwait is actually one of the strongest in the world. It's over three times the value of a US dollar, so the prices can be a little deceiving for food and entertainment. So keep that in mind if you're planning a trip to Kuwait. For tourist attractions, I definitely recommend checking out the Kuwait Towers at night. They light up, it's pretty awesome. 
Definitely check out the malls, there's a bunch of them. I went to the Grand Mosque, which is absolutely magnificent. It's the biggest mosque in the country. During Ramadan prayers, it fits 60,000 people. I just did a tour of the Grand Mosque, and this is the courtyard. It's very beautiful. The food in Kuwait was absolutely delicious. I don't think there was a single meal that I didn't enjoy. I had everything from your sweets, your knafe. I had shawarma, falafel, kebabs, sliders. I had some chai, tea, different types of sweets. It was absolutely delicious. Sabah al khair. Uh, we are in Salmiya. We just picked up some breakfast. I got a falafel sandwich from this place, Daim al khair, uh, right behind me. And this falafel sandwich was only 0.1 dinar that's like 35 cents 35.35 US dollars so pretty pretty good deal I got my falafel sandwich I think we're gonna get some uh, but everything is bikher here in Kuwait so we are getting lunch right now and I'm at a place called blue basket in Salmiya and this place is really good they make fatayr this is a fatayr jibne this is like a cheese pie and then we've got meat pie par lahme and then we have some patata they added in I didn't order it but they added patata we got a Fanta and all of this costs 850, 0.85 uh, Kuwaiti dinar and that's like three US dollars. So gonna enjoy this. In addition to the delicious food, the people are extremely hospitable. Everyone I met was very, very friendly. Everyone had a smile on their face and it was awesome to connect and meet people from literally all over the world. That's one of the things that really stood out to me, not only the generosity of the people that I met and the friends that I made, if you're walking along Marina Beach, very easy to hear over 10 different languages just by walking 100 to 200 meters. The coastline was absolutely beautiful. Another thing that I realized is that during the day, especially in the mornings, no one was really outside. People really waited until after the sun went down, until it was a little bit darker, no more sun, and that's really when you can feel the city come to life. People in Kuwait love their cars. Whether they have an American muscle car, an Italian sports car, people here love their cars. And at the Kuwait Towers in these parking lots, you'll see multiple car meetups. In addition to loving their cars, the people of Kuwait love their perfume, their cologne. I would say going through Sikmu Bartia or different areas of shopping, maybe 25 to 50% of the shops are actually for perfume. And this is really down to personal preference, but it was definitely something that stood out to me. It's something unique to Kuwait that you won't find in the United States, but definitely a culture of perfume. And hey, people like to smell good. Can't hate them for that. One of the coolest things that I did while I was in Kuwait was visit Flow House. Now Flow House has a few different attractions. You can see surfing here. And actually when I visited, they were filming something for the national holiday Independence Day that was a few days later. So I'll give them a huge shout out and link in the description below. Now the national day is something that's really special, 59 years of independence. And to be honest, I was really excited to see the fireworks come out of the Kuwait Towers. Unfortunately, the coronavirus started to take a hold of the country and the government had to shut down what were to be all the celebrations. But traditionally, during this epic holiday, people line up the boulevard and they fill water balloons and water guns and they spray cars and they celebrate their independence. And despite a lot of the entertainment and events being canceled by the government, it didn't hold people back. And it definitely shows the pride and the culture that Kuwait has, that even though this is a national holiday and the coronavirus is starting to take shape and hold of the city, it did not keep people away from celebrating their culture and experiencing something that they love, which is their country. I had an incredible week in Kuwait and across my airfare, food, entertainment, and all the expenses in the country of Kuwait, I spent just over $1,000. And I want to be transparent to how I spent that money in case you're considering taking a trip. My flight cost only $570. I got a sweet deal going from Detroit, connecting through Amsterdam, and then direct to Kuwait City. I got an Airbnb in Salmiya, which cost $270. It was awesome. I did my visa online before entering the country, and that cost 20 bucks. I have an international data plan on my phone, which cost $10 a day, so that's 70. Now on transportation between taxi, Karim, and taking the bus, I spent about $60. I spent $70 on food across the week. Now that might not sound like a lot, and that's because I had incredible generosity that I experienced in hospitality from people there in the restaurants, and a few people picked up a couple of my meals. Now on entertainment, I spent about $40 on all the activities that I did, and then on presents in the souk, 
in different areas, I bought about $50 worth of stuff to bring back to the US. In total, about $1,150. Now this is relatively expensive depending on where you're at, but if you're coming from the United States or somewhere in Western Europe, this is actually a pretty affordable trip for one week in an exotic country on the Arabian Gulf, and I had an absolute blast. We are in Kuwait International Airport. The time is now 1.15 a.m. I'm gonna catch a 3.55 a.m. flight to Amsterdam. Then we go to Detroit back home. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Catch you guys later. Bye.